Welcome to this lecture about the Wilcoxon sign rank test and the sign test. The Wilcoxon sign rank test and the sign test can be used as an alternative to the pair T test when the differences between the pairs cannot be assumed to be normally distributed. The sign test is commonly used only if the data does not fulfill the assumptions for the Wilcoxon sign rank test. The assumptions for the Wilcoxon sign rank test are that the dependent variable should have a continuous scale and that the data is collected based on paired measurements. Also, the distribution of the differences between the pairs should be symmetric. The null hypothesis for the Wilcoxon sign rank test states that the distribution of the differences is centered around zero. When the distribution is symmetric, like in this example, the null hypothesis then states that the median of the differences should be equal to zero. Or is the alternative hypothesis for a two-sided test states that the median is not equal to zero, which means that the distribution of the differences is not centered around zero. Note that the mean and the median had the same value in the symmetric distribution. However, since this is a non-parametric test, we usually use the median as a measure for the central tendency. The Wilcoxon sign rank test follows a number of steps, and we will here illustrate those steps by using a simple example where the systolic blood pressure has been measured on seven individuals before and after a drug treatment. The following values for the systolic blood pressure were collected before and after the treatment. For example, these two values come from the systolic blood pressure before and after the treatment of the first person, and this is for the second person, and so forth. The first step in the Wilcoxon sign rank test is to calculate the differences between the paired measurements. For example, we must subtract the blood pressure values before the treatment from the values after the treatment. For example, 137 minus 140 is equal to negative 3. We see that person number 6 was the only person who increased his systolic blood pressure after the treatment. Person number 7 had the same systolic blood pressure before and after the treatment. Next, we ignore cases where the difference is zero. In this example, we ignore the last case since the difference before and after for this person is zero. We let n be the reduced sample size, which is six in this example, since we have ignored one case out of the seven participants. Next, we calculate the absolute differences, which simply means that the negative differences are multiplied by negative one. This makes sure that we only have positive numbers for the differences. Next, we rank the absolute differences. Since we have excluded person number seven, the second person now has the smallest difference in blood pressure before and after. Therefore, person number two gets the rank one. Person number one, five, and six have the same absolute differences. For these ties, we calculate the mean of the numbers two, three, and four. These three persons therefore get the rank 3. Person number 4 has the next highest difference and gets the rank 5, whereas person number 3 gets the rank 6, since it showed the highest difference in systolic blood pressure before and after the treatment. We then sum the ranks of the observations with a positive difference. Person number 6 is the only one who has increased his systolic blood pressure after the treatment. The rank of this person is 3, which means that the sum of the ranks with a positive difference is 3. Next, we sum the ranks of the negative differences. The sum of these negative differences is 18. The smallest value of these sums is our test statistic. Our test statistic is therefore 3, since it is the smallest value out of 3 and 18. When the sample size is large, where n is greater than 20, the
that test statistic is assumed to follow a norm distribution, which means that we can compute an asymptotic p-value by first calculating the set statistic. If the sample size is small, one can compute a p-value with an exact test, similar to what we did in the lecture about the Wilcox and Mann Whitney test. Although our sample size is here less than 20, we'll calculate the set statistic so that we know how it is calculated. W is our previously calculated test statistic, which is equal to 3. And N is the sample size minus the number of cases with zero differences. In our example, the reduced sample size N is equal to 6. This part of the equation corrects for possible ties where capital T represents the number of unique ties, and little t is the number of such unique ties. In our example, we have just one set of unique ties, that includes three ties, which means the capital T is equal to one, and little t is equal to three, because we have three such ties. If we plug in the values and do the math, we see that the set statistic is negative 1.59, for a two-sided test, negative 1.59 and positive 1.59 represent our bounds for computing the p-value based on the standard normal distribution. The area to the left of negative 1.59 and to the right of positive 1.59 computed by software represents our p-value, which is 0 0.11. Since the p-value is greater than the significance level of 0 0.05, we do not reject the null hypothesis. We therefore draw the conclusion that the drug has no significant effect on the systolic blood pressure. Note that the same calculations are also valid for a one sample Wilcoxon test. For example, let's say that we have collected the systolic blood pressure of seven individuals, and that we want to compare with some hypothesized value, for example, a systolic blood pressure of 140. Then we would subtract the value 1 of 40 from each of these values, so that we get the following differences. We then use these differences in the same steps as we have seen previously. We'll now have a look at the sign test. The sign test is usually used if the assumptions of the Wilcoxon sign rank test are not fulfilled such as when the data is on ordinal scale, or if the distribution of the differences is not symmetric. Let's use the sign test on our previous data, where we have calculated the differences between systolic blood pressure before and after the treatment. Instead of ranking the differences, we now just put a negative sign for the negative differences and a positive sign for the positive differences. We then simply count the number of positive and negative signs. In this example, we have five negative signs and one positive sign. We then let S be the number of the least number of signs, which is one in our example. If the sample size is large, we can compute an asymptotic p-value by computing the set statistic by the following formula. Note that this formula does not include any continuity correction. To include continuity of correction, a 1 is added in the numerator. If we plug in our values, we see that the set statistic is negative 1.63. The set statistic defines our bounds in the standard normal distribution. By using a software, the area in these two tails was computed to 0 0.1, which represents our p-value. When our sample size is small, like in this example, one usually computes the exact p-value instead. For a sign test, we can use the binomial distribution to compute the exact p-value. The binomial distribution can be used to compute, for example, the probability to get one head out of six coin tosses. It can also be used to calculate the probability of getting one or zero heads out of six tosses. Since we like to compute the probability of observing one positive sign or fewer 
if the null hypothesis is true, it will be the same thing as calculating the probability to get one or zero heads out of six coin tosses. By using the binomial distribution, we can compute the probability of tossing one or zero heads out of six tosses, which is 0 0.11. This probability corresponds to a p-value for a one-sided sign test. If we multiply that probability by 2, we will get the exact p-value of a two-sided sign test. The probability of observing 0, 1, 5 or 6 positive signs by chance if the null hypothesis is true is therefore 22%. Since the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, we do not reject the null hypothesis. This was the end of this lecture about the Wilcoxon sign rank test and the sign test. Thanks for watching.